Hello and welcome to episode four of our series, Teaching Remotely, Learning Together. I'm David Bott, Associate Director at the Institute of Positive Education here at Geelong Grammar School in Australia. Throughout this series, we've been connecting with leading educators from schools around the world, and we've invited them to share stories, strategies, approaches, what's gone well and lessons learned from their experience of delivering high quality education during these unprecedented times. In this episode, I'm joined by Theo Mansi from the Australian International School in Singapore. Theo is the Elementary Visual Arts Coordinator at AIS, and he's also a practicing artist and painter who's held many successful exhibitions throughout Asia. Theo is also an experienced International Baccalaureate Framework Educator, who leads workshops in the Asia Pacific region on creativity and the role of arts in education. Theo is also a loving father, friend of our institute, and outstanding educator. So I hope you enjoy this conversation and find it valuable. Theo, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Good to see you on the, the screen, but I'd, I'd prefer to be like last time when we were seeing you over in Singapore, uh, exploring your school, learning a bit about Australian International School, hanging out, having dinner. But I guess this is the best we've got at the moment, but strange. That's what, yeah, that's what we've come to at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, we really did enjoy having you guys up um, in Singapore and we look forward to the next opportunity. But uh, this is the next best thing, I guess. Yeah, it is. And, and so we're very grateful for you sharing some of what you've learned over the, the last couple of months during this experience. Um, so just give us a tiny bit of background, Theo, about where AIS is at at the moment. You've been in lockdown for a little while. W what's the situation at the moment? Yeah, so um, we, we follow the Australian calendar. So we're very much into towards the end of term one um, circuit breaker, which is what they're calling lockdown up here, came upon us quite suddenly. And we found out, I guess, towards the last part of week nine. And then we had to go straight into lockdown on week 10 of term one. So that was a very quick transition that we had to scramble and try and think of creative ways of how we're going to do this, right? Yeah. And this is where the reason I really wanted to speak to you today um, is that you, AIS, led by you and your team, have had a, a real emphasis, maybe more than other schools that we've been in touch with, but a real emphasis on trying to leverage art and artistic work and, and creativity to help students' well-being throughout this situation, to keep students engaged, to help families. It's a fascinating approach you've had. Where, where, did, where did this uh, real emphasis on creativity and artistic work and, the, the, uh, you know, the strategy come from? Yeah, well, we're really, we were really conscious of um, how is this going to look and how are we going to try and emulate the experience that the kids would ordinarily have at school? Mm -hmm. um, how are we going to emulate that in the home-based learning virtual environment and we were very conscious of trying to ensure that they didn't miss out on what we call the value-added important components that that support the classroom learning the irregular learning of, mm. of math science and, and, and English so the, the likes of music art and PE how is that going to look so we had to really sit down and think um, the how alternatively we we're going to consider mm. Lots of things we had to consider is, is that kids would be stuck at home. They wouldn't have access to materials. We had to make a lot of assumptions that they, we had to alter and consider the, the, the program to, and, and there were lots of families that had siblings as well. Yeah. So we created tasks that were conducive to not just individual learning, but yeah. family based and peer learning with kids that are in different age groups in, in the primary school. Yeah. And um, I think we came up with some pretty creative ideas and I thought that it was an important component. We sat down with the heads of curriculum and heads of year and said the value that we placed with the arts was an important component of its success, I believe. Mm. Some schools we've um, seen over the last couple of months have maybe taken a slightly different perspective and that is to say that um, the focus has been on the core subjects or the core disciplines perhaps and and art and the dr dramatic arts and um, the, the value add type subjects that you've been talking about have taken a back seat in some scenarios. Sometimes that's because of pure pragmatics about just trying to deliver the basics of schooling online. But, but some other schools, I think it's been a philosophical decision that we're just going to put art on the back burner for a while because uh, it's kind of peripheral, it's a bit less important, but you've taken a different approach. How did you how did you kind of sell that to the the senior leadership, or, or why was that so successfully embraced? Do you think we we 
Uh, very lucky in the situation that um, we have a very strong, very strong arts department. Um, but we really um, presented the concept that it's important that the students, whilst engaging with the daily activities with their classroom teachers, um, that they have an outlet and an avenue to move away from screen and to have uh, activities and engagements with the art team that that are conducive to a broader 21st century skill type of learning that's not an immediate task or like a like a face-to-face -face class it's, uh, it's hard to explain we, we 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 valued the importance of balance we valued the importance of um creatively taking a step back and involving and engaging with the arts that's not a uh, too immediate and too task orientated mm. Some of the, uh, the work that I've been reading recently about engagement or disengagement at the moment, but engagement has really focused on allowing students time to get lost in their work, you know, to be yeah, immersed we, in long term we, projects. So we adjusted as we went along. So feedback was a really important component from us, feedback from students, feedback from families. Um, with regard to, and we adjusted as we went along. We in the end had about five, five weeks of home based learning and we, the feedback, we welcomed it quite uh, with open arms because we adjusted accordingly. So, mm. so we found that the engagements, we had about an 80% engagement rate, mm. um, which really surprised us. And we found that this completely positive with regard to the students asking for more. Mm. Um, it was a weekly, um, sort of challenge, art challenge. But then we then added a second tier where we would produce videos that were art inspired that would really for art interest that the kids could engage with in any way they wanted to. Mm. And then we also did a third tier where the kids got to see and meet with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis where it would be what we call the brain break, which was an art mm. activity and quite a fun thing. So there were three mm. levels of engagement. Mm. But the th we really, we really um, welcomed the feedback because it mm. really altered our, our steps moving forward yeah. and we refined our um, engagement procedure accordingly. Yeah. And so th this surveys you're talking about were j just a kind of a basic survey monkey type survey that you sent out and elicited feedback from parents and students or just students or? So they're all students from year one upwards. So the year preps um, or kindergarten as you'd have in Australia, the parents responded. So, but we did that on a weekly basis mm. to get some feedback because this was all new to us as well and new to the, 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 the wider community. And we wanted to know where we could improve. We wanted to know um, what what the kids were getting the most out of, where they where they were, were finding difficulties and what they were getting the most value from. Mm. And um, the arts was one of those things. So we thought, mm. right, well, they're clearly engaging with this area. Let's, yeah. let's see if we can push it a little bit further. Yeah. That's, it's such an exciting approach, Theo. And I think, as, you, as you've said, the opportunity for students to step away from the computer to engage in projects that are longer term, that are not just immediate um, uh, academic type learning, but it's where they can get lost in some form of creative expression seems such a critical component of what students need to be doing at home at the moment. So I think that's such an exciting approach. Yeah. Um, Theo, I'd love to just share some of the examples of your students' work that um, has been produced and you've sent me through uh, videos and dozens and dozens of examples. It's um, amazing the quality and the, the content and the uh, quantity also of, of work that's been produced, amazing. We've selected just a few uh, images that try to capture some of the the, the highlights from students' work. So I'm going to um, fl flick a couple of those images up and I wonder if you could just um, talk to us a little bit about what this particular project was and what it meant to you and what was the rationale behind it. So um, here's the first one, Theo, I think uh, on the screen there. Can you talk to us about this one? Okay, so um, this was a, a weekly task, a weekly challenge called Art Appropriation where um, we had the good fortune of already having just to, just to give some um, background, we already had uh, a platform called Seesaw, which was a, a online platform which we already had in place with the students, like an online, online journal type of platform. I'm not sure if you've heard of Seesaw mm. or not. Yep. Yeah, it's common. Um, so we were very fortunate that that was already in place. So that's something the kids did not need to learn. So putting the task up, we'd, we'd post a weekly task and say, this week we're going to be looking at 
the concept of appropriation and we'd give examples of what appropriation is and give them some some little research questions saying find out about it here are some examples here are some examples from your staff and then choose a piece that you'd like to appropriate with either on your own or with family members at home so here's a piece that that um both of these kids are in the primary school and they decided to do a piece in conjunction with each other and submit it online. So I think they've done a wonderful job with um, appropriating and emulating a famous art piece. Mm. So what was good about this is that we found a lot of the responses that we were getting were quite personal for the children. So we had examples of uh, children finding artwork. So just for them to look up the artwork, artwork with cats. So we'd have a child that mm. had an example of them feeding their cat or this example where it's got siblings together. So they were consciously going to a lot of trouble to try and best represent their their family and, and engage with it in a creative way mm. to present it together. It was really, yeah. really interesting, the, the responses we got from the kids. So that's, to me, that what I really get excited about there is the, the way that the family is being embraced in the learning process itself. And I, I think... Um, Again, what we, we haven't, I haven't seen a lot of examples of the intentional uh, incorporation of family into the learning. And, and in this example, you know, you almost forced the students to, to, instead of locking themselves in a room away from their family and learning, you're saying go out into your family, bring your family into the learning, and the, the, the family becomes part of the learning uh, and creative experience. I think that's Absolutely, and especially in this unique situation, a lot of families are working from home, mm. and this was an opportunity for, say, the parents that might be working with with, with whatever businesses they're aligned with in their in their home office, and then this is a, this these these art tasks, these art challenges, provided an opportunity and a platform for that family to come back from their respective mm. rooms with the specific tasks they were given to mm. do something together, and I think mm. they really, as a community, really embraced it and kept asking, mm. "What's next?" Yeah. What, what's, yeah. what, do you, what do you got for us next, right? Yeah. So that was really a, a really good opportunity, again, with the feedback that we received that yeah. un, unwittingly by, by asking that the task be done either with a sibling or yeah. with the family, thinking yeah. some might do it, it actually became something that they embraced and really yeah. endeavoured to, to try and make sure that each activity was done. Yeah, brilliant. Talk to us about this one, Theo. Oh, this was one of my – this was um, – uh, a piece that a student had sent in um, where we had it as an assemblage, an assemblage task, which was probably the week before the appropriation, where they had to, we again explained what an assemblage is and gave some examples. An assemblage is an arrangement of objects um, that have something to do with each other, right? And we had lots of really, really interesting submissions, but a lot of them um, connected not just to to the art task, but to what was happening in their world. So here's an example that a student has sent in. They've assembled toilet rolls and masks mm -hmm. and the such mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. which is really clever because mm -hmm. it's, it's what they're experiencing at the moment. And um, there were a lot of examples that used toilet rolls and masks and things related to their, their you know, the, the hand washing thing. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to see how the kids are, are, are expressing their creativity and um, understanding of what's happening in their world yeah. through their art. How important, let me pick up on that word, expressing themselves. How important a role does creativity and art play in kind of allowing that form of expression, self-expression, exploration? How important do you think that is? It's, it's imperative because that builds um, self-understanding and self-determination and, and it, it's a providing an avenue that perhaps they might not be the best at using words, but the visuals can, can as they say, speak volumes. But it's an avenue, providing an avenue for those students that are visually inclined um, and uh, have the, the, the tasks, or the, the skill set to be able to express themselves in other avenues. This just provides them with that other avenue. And that gives them the confidence to be able to say, this is my world, this is me, mm. this is how I'm responding to it. That response component, um, is really, really important because then being able to respond to something rather than keep it in is giving other people an understanding of where they're at, how they're, how they're interacting with their world, right, and how they're responding to it. Do you, do you intentionally or explicitly, deliberately unpack some of the stuff you've just been talking about? Does, is there some form of debrief that follows 
the child's you know submission of the work? Yes, absolutely. So on that platform we were talking about that seesaw, the kids submit the work and in many instances they put a comment going, this is what I did. They might talk about, they might reflect on their artist practice or the process or why they chose certain things and then um, my whole team, we, were given, we, were, we made it an essential agreement that we would respond individually to each piece. Not in a simple way of, wow, what a wonderful piece or that's great, thanks for submitting it. It would be to more of a personal personal um, manner. So, for example, that piece you, sh- you showed earlier, I-, I would respond with, what a clever way to use something that's been in the news at the moment with mm. regard to the toilet rolls and the mm. fact that you used a mask, that was very clever too. Mm. Why did you include yourself mm. in the picture, right? So then that would start a conversation, right? Mm. And now my staff have a-, a vast number of students, but we thought that that was just as important component, that reflective component, right, mm. was just as important as the creating component. Mm. And is uh, how skillful, uh, how, how well trained is are your team to respond to any well-being issues that arise out of those conversations? Because potentially you're opening up, you know, uh, an, an avenue for students to explore feelings that may not come out in other forms of their schooling. So, how do you manage things that might arise out of those conversations? That's a really good question because we did find that particularly with art and art being an expressive nature. And we had some students who were, for example, homeschooled and weren't with their parents. And uh, a lot of them in their comments and in their art were reflecting a little bit of, um, a little bit of emotion that we thought, well, that's a little bit concerning. So what we would do, we would speak as a team once a week and then anything that we thought was something that needed to be pursued further, we would um, then meet up with our head of welfare who was accessible and then flag that with the classroom teacher who was in contact with that kid on a daily basis, get back to the kid and then, and then go from there. So in many of those instances, we'd say, well, I'm sorry to hear that you're sad today. Well, you know, why did you draw a sad face or why did you represent this ogre type character? You know, oh, because I'm not feeling the best at the moment. Why? You want to talk about it? And those conversations then went further. And if we felt them the need to go further, then we'd get the help of their welfare department who would either support my team right, to be able to handle the individual because that's who the kid initially reached out to or the welfare team would take it further from there. But we had tremendous support with regard to uh, a welfare team and welfare experts that would help support our team be able to best handle that situation. Beautiful. Thanks, Theo. Theo, this uh, image was part of a a project, I think, called Close Up. Yeah, so Close Up was something that we really, the kids really, really enjoyed. They we had to actually start to ask them to stop sending through examples because they were just run around the house finding close-ups. So the task was to, it was a perspective task and the task was to use a device, whether it be a phone or their actual iPads, to take close-ups of interesting objects that we would have to guess what they were, right? There might be lots of interesting utensils in the kitchen and the such like. And they just went to town on that saying, guess this, guess that. That's, we, we, we had to cap them at 10 pieces each kid, right? Um, And uh, a lot of them came back with really, really interesting stories of um, my mum's going to kill me if she knew I took a close-up of this picture. And this one here that you've got is, um, at first I thought, well, that's a nice picture, but the comment that came with it was um, my dad and I don't, uh, because he's really busy in his home office, we take time out to wash the car every day, even though the car doesn't need to be washed every day. That's the task that we're doing. And he sent that close up saying, this is really important to me because it's time that my dad and I get to spend together, um, even though the car's not dirty. So he sent a close up of the soap that's on the car that he's been washing. So that was really, I like that, that the kids are making those connections with their art. Like this is an important piece to me, not because of the piece, but because of what it represents to me. It represents that time that I get to spend with my dad. That and that's why it's important. And having that back history, yeah, is yeah. really to have that sent through um, and that comment made, made us realise this is more than just an art task for the kids. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to say that's very sophisticated thinking for a child. I mean, I mean, that's what adults appreciate in art. It's often not really the brushstrokes themselves, but the what that represents or the beauty that represents. So how do you help, how do you go about helping students understand that art is only in part about the physical skill of producing an image on paper or whatever it is and and actually it's more about the the heart the soul the story behind it how do you help students understand that 
again, we have the very good, um, we're very fortunate in that the program that we've been running at the school for many years now, um, whilst it would be very easy to fall into the trap of, because art is only given a certain amount of time a week, which 80 minutes of class, it's easy to fall into the trap of that being art making. Uh, we've got to make, uh, we've got to produce, right? Whereas um, we've made a conscious effort to ensure that our program is 50% creating and right. 50% responding. Right. So the kids right from kindergarten all the way through have already experienced with, say, for example, a 10-week unit at school, four weeks of that, there's no producing of art. There's discussion, mm. there's reflecting, there's researching, there's looking back on, on practice and process, there's... Um, what we call critical friend, where they sit down with each other and not talk about what they like, it's talk about why did you do this, why did you do that. So those conversations are already part of the culture that we have existing and I think that that really, really supported this home-based learning because they were already conscious of those aspects of not just what they're learning but why they're learning it, not just what they're producing but why they're producing it. So we were really grateful that, that we had that in place because that's what's really come out with this home-based learning is the reflecting component of our program. Oh, it's, uh, I love that. And I wish, looking back on, on my schooling, I, I wish I'd developed some sense of that. I, I think I never fell in love with art. I, I don't have never pursued any. I've never practised much. I'm not very good at it because of that reason. And I never sort of saw the inherent value for me. I think for me, Art at school was about art making, about producing the pencil case or the piece of woodwork or whatever it was, but I never really developed that inherent sense of the, the value that un underlies art. And I think that approach is so valuable for children and especially, as you say, during times where we're locked in our houses and other forms of creative outlet may be limited and oh, it's, it's such an exciting approach. Um, Theo, this image here is um, self-portrait. Yep. So this was a portrait unit. So this came later in the piece. We, we started introducing uh, the portrait unit and um, this one, this was the only unit we had that came with a part B because this was in our fifth week of lockdown and we thought, how are we going to start differentiating a little bit more, even though we're giving a, the standard task to everybody and asking them to contribute as individuals and as families or groups. Um, so what we found was the part B component was more specific for what we were talking about earlier, earlier with the reflection and um, research component. But coming back to this actual picture is what we also started to find further down the track is that the kids, because we've had these kids now for, for almost half, of, half a year, and this is an example of one of our students that's quite an introvert, right, and, and would, would uh, in, in class, would kick themselves and not respond. But we found that this environment, this home-based learning environment, this, this child flourished mm -hmm. with regard to um, engaging with the arts. And, and we really got, are we really going to start researching and, and taking note of why is that? Why, why is that this, this, this child out of the blue, right, is flourishing with regard to her response to the activities. Um, her, her actual artwork is, is of the same calibre, so it's, it's her work, but the response rate was very quick and was obviously something that she loved and the comments were, were a plethora of, of comments on a comment bank and um, we just found that this environment obviously suits some people, right? So the question for us then is moving forward to school going back how can we ensure then that we are engaging these, these individuals who seem to be flourishing with this home-based learning? How can we engage them best and better back in the classroom environment? That's a question I really wanted to ask you during this conversation um, is exactly that. Can you, I know it's very early and you're just considering these questions. Have you stumbled on any insights that might help you learn from this type of experience in terms of adapting what you do at AIS in the art program or, or more broadly at the school? Yeah, so our art team has really taken this, well, as our holiday discussion because we're mm. on, on a break now, but we've talked about, yeah, how are we going to start? Are we, are we, are we, have we got gaps mm. that kids are falling in that we thought we're doing a wonderful job, right? We're, and we're very proud of our program and we're always seeking to improve ourselves and we thought, how can we alter what we do? How can we alter how we're delivering this program to ensure that people aren't falling in the gaps? Do we alter the, the, the manner that we're presenting things? Do we make sure that it's as, as diverse as possible? 
we are accounting for differentiation, but are we differentiating in the delivery of our program? Is it being received in the same manner from each student with regard to the the, way, the type of learner that they are. So these are things that we're going to consider moving forward and start altering. So this was come, this is kind of, if you're looking for silver linings, this is one of them because we started to um, look within ourselves and see how can, we, how can we change things, how can we make things better, right? So this, this provided an opportunity as a mirror to see, okay, well, this has happened, right? What, do, what is that saying about our, our delivery of our program? How can we make this better? We've got a wonderful product as it is, but we need to ensure that we're catering to these kids that we thought we were, right? Does that answer your question? Uh, I love that. And I, I think that is the, the most important question for schools in this time now or as we start to transition back to school or, or transition forward to schools as we've been trying to, to say um, around here. But um, that question of what can we learn and how can we make schools even better is, is such an important question to ask right now because – Otherwise, it will get lost in the chaos and the, the reality of doing schooling. It's such a busy place. We have to take time, take stock and reflect on what we've learned through this experience, don't we? So I think it's so, so important, Theo. Theo, there's one more image I'd love to you to uh, just reflect on for us. And it's this one here. Um, and this was part of a project, I think, called View from a Window. Yeah, View from a Window. This was what earlier in the piece in terms of, I think it was in week two of lockdown. And that is a lot of the kids were feeling quite isolated in their houses. And a lot of them, like in the background of this building, are living in high rise. This, this child has the good fortune of having a balcony, but many of them don't. So they're, they felt quite isolated in their only experience of the outside world is a view from a window. So we thought, right, let's let's work with this and let's have that as one of their art tasks. Yeah. And um, this example of the child was, can you see my view? Here's the view. And can you see me? Here's me, right? Yeah. So that it, they made, he made it very important that he was part of this. So that it was his work, it's him, he's there, that's his view, what do you think, right? Um, did I get it right? And here's the stuff I used. So that was really cool. How important... How much, the question I really want to ask, I guess, is how much recognition do you think the students have in this type of work about the impact of their environment on their well-being? Is that something that your students are aware of? Singapore is obviously a very tightly condensed uh, environment. Does that come through their artwork as well? Yeah, I believe so. Their artwork um, uh, is, is really just there. This is, this is representing, this is where I'm at. Right. This is my situation, and this is how. Look, this is the this is the view I've got. This is all what I'm seeing at the moment. Right. Um, this is what's in the house, right? mm -hmm. uh, and these are the little things I'm doing with my family, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of a visual record of their experience of this home base lockdown situation, mm -hmm. and um, we are finding that they're becoming more aware of their environment because they have to stop and look at it. So these mm. tasks are requiring them to look at the, the world through the lens of an artist, mm. right? So mm. um, they have to then stop for a moment and go, hang on, I walk past this thing every day and it's only now that I've noticed it mm. because this is a task that I've been given and I've had to, I've been put in a situation where I've had to stop and have a look because there's nothing else. So they've become really fine-tuned to, to their surroundings because they've been put in a situation where that's it, that's it, that's what they've got. But they've become more aware of the, the things around them mm. because they've had to stop and have to look at them in more detail and creating tasks that require them to stop and look at the things, the everyday things in their kitchen, the view from their window, that in the past they would... Like a, like a like a wallpaper, you know, you get you get so used to it, you forget what it looks like, right? So all the 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 journey to school, right? Um, it's only when you're asked and tasked to stop and look and see that from a perspective of it being fresh and new that they become more aware and attuned to their environment. So being able to provide them with art experiences that enhance that is a good thing. Because mm. that's providing them then with a skill set to be able to look at their world in a more appreciative nature. Mm. Theo, um, I'm so grateful for you sharing, being so willing to share your experience. Um, love the way you've helped your students express themselves to be aware of their world, to engage their parents, to 
you know, share of themselves in such a powerful, creative way. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful way that you've contributed to the well-being and to the education of your community through, through this experience. Can I ask you one final question? And that is, um, you see the world, you are an artist, right? You see the world through the lens of an artist, to use your own wo words. <clears throat> if you could give one piece of advice to school leaders or principals or the education world more broadly, um, as we transition back, you know, we've been through this um, COVID, this pandemic, you, what you've learned from your students, what you've seen through the lens of an artist, what, what advice would you give to school leaders in mainstream schools in Australia, internationally, about what you've learned that might contribute to education more broadly, um, you know, progressing in a, in a really exciting way going forward? I think that the important thing that we've learned, and I believe that especially with some of the feedback that we've given our leaders with regard to the arts program is the importance of balance, the importance of ensuring that the children are exposed to and experience a balance of all facets of education. Yes, it is important for them to, to for their marks to stay up there, for them to aspire to important things and and the subjects that lead to that. But the the balance of the humanities and the balance of a of oh, the balance the balance of a of a program that encourages children to stop and be children, to stop and enjoy their world, right, and respond to their world is imperative. Mm -hmm. So that will help in building that well-rounded child because there won't be anything missing. So I think that balance is probably to ensure that there's a balance of all programs and all facets, particularly the arts, but I'm mm -hmm. biased with that. So. <laughs> Theo, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your ongoing passion. Thank you for everything you're contributing to your students and then sharing with, with the rest of us. Very, very grateful and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks very much. I appreciated being on 